Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fraser Field for Catholic Central League Baseball. Very early, this is a big one. These are two very good teams in the Central Catholic Central League that battle it out each and every year. Austin Prep right near the top with St. Mary's. Jammed them inside. They dribble it down the first base line. They got him at first. The play goes three to one on the out. There was reluctance. Bernie D, the first baseman, was trying to hold off and, and stay on the bag. He had to go get the ball and hustling over was Bobby Alcock to get the throw. And they get Dylan Arnold out. The play goes three to one. High and away for a ball. This is Peter Burns. In for a strike. Game number one for Austin Prep. Game number two for St. Mary's. They had a big walk-off win last week on the road, 17 to nothing. Good fastball again for a strike. Peter Burns is the catcher. Pitching from the stretch, Alcock. Strike three called on the inside corner. Good pitch. Logan Bravo, the shortstop. In for a strike. <laughs> Setting up outside, he threw it down and away. Bravo laid off. Waved at that pitch. Very deliberate, Alcock. Started to pull the trigger and held up on a pitch that broke down and in. Good fastball again at the knees. Strong inning for Bobby Alcock. Three up, three down, two of them call third strikes. So he breezes through the first inning. It'll be Colin Jaina on the mound for Austin Prep. All in ready will be the first head refaces. I talked to the Austin prep coach. He said they get out. 
A couple of scrimmages, they haven't got out very much. The experienced coaching staff of St. Mary's, Derek Dana, the head guy, Tommy Donahue, Timmy Philo, the assistants, they've been together for a while, all the way back to high school when they play with each other. All and ready had a very good year for the hockey team. Steps right into the baseball. In for a strike. Well known family in the city. Fire and police. Hit up the middle in the center field. He doesn't waste much time. He took one pitch. And he gets the first hit of the ball game. Pushes the bunt down the first base line. They let it go foul. They're going to come out and, and argue the play, but it just crossed over the line when the pitcher touched the ball. Derek Dane was out saying, no, he touched it, but he didn't touch it. It's a good call by the umpire. This is Kyle Ouellette. So what we're getting back is ready. They throw over again, getting back is ready. As usual, action going on at Manning Field. Looks like a track meet over there now. Might be something else later on. These two places, once they get going, they get going virtually 24-7. They throw down. Ready was in between. He got a good jump. And then he didn't realize initially the ball got away from the catcher. When he realized he took side to go, it didn't go that far away, so he decided he's gonna go back. Drew a throw, but he got back to the bag. Squid took it down the way for a ball. Third baseman Alex Martinez Flying in from third base. Swings away, hits it foul off to the right side, out of play. Hit it off the fist, slow roller. They only have one play, and that'll be the first. It's not a sacrifice, but it works the same.
jammed him. He just got a piece and trickled it past the mound. The shortstop had only one play. That's a good job by Bravo Logan over to Josh Botnicki at first base to get the one out they had. This is Lee Pacheco. Lee Pacheco doesn't rest much. Went from the football season to the basketball season and now to the baseball season. Yeah, he does very well in all three. Football team was inches away from going to the Super Bowl. They were tied in the fourth period and lost it late. Basketball team was a game away from going to the Garden to play for the Eastern Mass. Hit up the middle, knocked down. That's a nice play by the shortstop. They, they got him at first base. That's an even greater play. I thought he saved a run by swapping it. He made the throw to first, and he got Pacheco at first. Great play by Logan Bravo. I thought it was going to be first and third. I, saw, I thought he saved a run. John Mulready takes the pitch for a strike, but what a great play. They hit up the middle, took it away, and not only took it away and held a runner at third, but threw the runner out at first. What a tremendous play. Waves at that pitch, and it's 0-2. Just got a piece. Threw it up and in. Uh, Moretti fouled it off. Uh, uh, Colin Jana thought that was strike three. He was off to the dugout. Pitching from the stretch with the runner at third. Up and away for a ball. <laughs> Stepping off as Reddy was getting a little push off the third base bag. Reaches and hits it foul back behind home plate. They're playing him straight away in left and center. They're playing way over near the right field line. Already he's got a lot of room in right center field. Center field is straight over the second base bag. Hit foul back again. Already wasting some pitches. Making Colin Jana throw some. So here we go again. Hits it in the air to center field. Moving over is the center fielder, Dylan Arnold, to make the play. Got down, didn't get real fat part of the bat. Got down near the handle a little bit and just kind of popped it out there. So after the hit, a couple of ground balls moving the runner over to third. That great play in the infield by the shortstop, Logan Bravo. That saved a run. And we played an inning here. And at the end of one, St. Mary's nothing. Austin Prep, nothing. Josh Botnicki, the first baseman, will lead it off. In for a strike. Bobby Alcock has been a machine. He's been on top of every hitter so far. Waves at that pitch. Thought about pulling the trigger, held up, the pitch just missed. Good waste pitch by Alcock. Didn't miss by much.
Hit the shot. Big hop for Pacheco. Nice stretch at first base by Bernardini. They get Botnicki. The play goes six to three. For the first out. Alex Martinez, the third baseman, will be the hitter. There's the first pitch strike. Good. Took a little something off that breaking ball and dropped it in. That one didn't miss by much. I look over at Man Field. Looks like the entire city of Lynn is over there. There's a ton of track people running around. Good fastball. Martinez didn't have a chance to even swing at that one. That had a little mustard on it. Down and in for a ball. Nice stop by Capola, the catcher. High for a ball. Foul out of play. Back in the direction of Western Avenue behind home plate. You know, nice little crowd here. St. Mary's brought some people. Austin Prep brought a few. Not that far away. Chop to third base. Not going to get him. It's an infield hit. Good effort by Nicolakakis. Just a high chopper. So Alcock had retired four in a row before the infield hit. John Gilbride, the second baseman, will be the hitter. Good fastball for a strike. Quick throw over, getting back, standing up is Martinez. Down the way for a ball. You look out. You look a little wisp of a couple of white specks posing as clouds up in the sky. Clear blue sky, bright sunshine, and you'd say what a gorgeous day for baseball. And you would be wrong. Nice play by the third base coach. Another quick throw over. Ooh, that just broke late. Good curveball.
hit the ball back to the screen. I apologize. I'm having a, I had a little bit of difficulty with the St. Mary's roster. And it wasn't St. Mary's fault. It was my fault. I left off a name, and I tried to back it up. I think I said, I think Lecoq is at third. It's Moretti at third. Way up and in, had a duck away from that one. Another quick toss over to first. Hit in the air, that's going to go out of play. Oh, I think I finally got it figured out. Moretti is at third. Nikola Kakas is at first. And Berardini is the designated hitter. Tommy Cash, the right fielder, swung over way over to the right field foul line. Waved at that pitch for strike three. Down a little bit. Might have been on the corner, might have been outside. He swung right through it. Third strikeout for Alcock. Both teams are using designated hitters. So neither one of the pitchers will be hitting unless they make some changes during the game. On the corner for a strike. This is Kyle Barry, the designated hitter, as I just talked about, for Austin Prep. Foul tip held on to. The runner takes off, strike three called. So he finished the first inning, back-to-back -back strikeouts. He finishes the second inning, back-to-back -back strikeouts. He gave up the infield hit, but strands the runner at first. So Austin Prep comes up with zeros through the first two. Each team has a hit. Alcock has struck out four. And Colin Jane will start his second inning of work, and it will be five, six, and seven. Jared Coppola, Anthony Nicolakakis, Cal Berardini. And she may as well try to get on the board first. We mentioned this is rather early to have these two, who usually are up near the top in the Catholic Central League, battling it out. This is a little better day than when we started the first, if you Watch the first game on Channel 15 was Link Classical taking on Mask and Norman. And the wind was blowing about 80 miles an hour. Pop up to the second baseman was caught by the first baseman in foul territory. And it was bitterly cold. Not as cold today. 
Still not a great day for baseball, but better than it was last week. Went down the way, went down and in, and it's 2-0 and to Jared Coppola. Down the way again, 3-0. and So Coppola will take at least one. He's going to be very fussy trying to become a base runner here in the second inning. Still pitching from the stretch, Jaina. Taking all the way, it's in for a strike. And again, he'll be very fussy here. It's got to be a pitch he can handle. And that's ball four. So for the second inning in a row, St. Mary's gets the leadoff hitter on, this time with a walk. First walk given up by either pitcher. Anthony Nicolakakis looks down at Tommy Donahue for a sign. He has some very big hits. He was part of the Babe Ruth program last year that went to the Nationals. They won the New Englands, went to the Nationals. And he hit some long bombs last year for the Babe Ruth team. I believe he hit one of the Nationals as well. I don't know if it was out Midwest, Colorado, Nebraska, one of those places out there. Great trip for those young kids. He doesn't get a lot of that, but he gets enough to punch it in the right field for a base hit. Capola had to wait to see if it was going to be caught. Realized it wasn't. Made a wide turn at second, but easily got back before as he threw the ball in. So a walk on the hit puts runs at first and second for Kyle Berardini. Third baseman cheating in. First baseman cheating in. They take the pitch down the way. Everybody breaking. Leaving third base wide open. Tommy Donahue down at third, flashing signs. Timmy Filer down at first, coaching. Derek Dana giving him the signs from the dugout, the head guy. Flash the button, fouls it off. Tommy Cash is the on deck hitter. Reaches again. Pushes it foul. So that'll take the bunt off now with two strikes. It's funny how you see the different umpires. The umpire behind the plate is wearing like the suit coat umpiring out of gear. Most of them wear the little zipper or button up jacket. Hit back to the mound. They go for two, and they get it. Nice turn in the middle by the shortstop. Good job by the pitcher. Picture perfect. So St. Mary's again has a runner at third, but again is with two outs for Tommy Cash. Pitch is low for a ball, so will look promising. A high chopper, and it was one hop to the pitcher. Hits it straight up in the air, the shortstop in front of the second baseman. Bravo makes another play. He made a couple of play he made that big play in the first inning. 
He helped her in the double play here. Catches the last out. So St. Mary's, a promising inning goes by the boards. They got a hit and a walk. And they wind up leaving a runner at third for the second straight inning. And we play two here in this Catholic Central League leadoff game at Fraser Field. No score between St. Mary's and Austin Prep. We'll start the third inning. Both pitchers have given up a hit. Jana Collin also gave up a walk for Austin Prep, but a double play started by him. He helped himself sign the double play, and he's kept St. Mary's off the board the first two innings. We told you they opened up their first game with bombs away. They won 17 to nothing on the road, going only five innings. Swing and a miss. This is Jake Thane, the right fielder. Wide for a ball. High and tight for a ball. Alcock has struck out four in the two innings. He just gave up that infield hit. Chopper to third that Mulready made a nice try on. Just couldn't throw the runner out. It was hit too slowly. Reaches for that, hits it foul, and we get even at two and two. Thane and Ikruto is on deck, and then back to the top of the order for Austin Prep here in the third. Good pitch. He knew it, too. He, Alcock took something off and just floated it in. As soon as Thane took it, he said, I knew it was strike three. Five strikeouts for Bobby Alcock. Four of them are called. Andy Croteau, the left fielder, takes it low for a ball. Already is closing in at third base. I think he might try to butt. Nicola Kakas is in close at first base as well as Croteau takes the pitch high for a ball. Swings at the 2 0 pitch, swings right through it, and it's 2 and 1. Good fastball. Alcock comes back to even account at 2-2 two two after falling behind 2-0. Oh. Didn't miss by much. That's a tough pitch to take with two strikes. Just missed the outside corner. Strike three call at the letters on the inside corner. Back to back strikeouts to start the third inning. Top of the order, Dylan Arnold. He hit a little slow grounder down the first baseline. He almost beat it. It was a question of who was going to get it. The pitcher first baseman, Nick Lacanacus, finally got it and flipped it to Alcock. They just nipped him at first for the out, leading off the ball game. Up for the second time against Alcock. Just a little bit and outside for a ball. Slicing it foul is going to go down to that grassy knoll behind first base. Almost went over the wall.
Hit on the line by the second baseman in the right field. A shot. Glidon had one chance. It just skipped past him. So a two-out hit by Dylan Arnold gives Austin Prep this second base runner. That was a sharply hit ball into right field for a base hit. Peter Burns was called on on strikes his one trip. Over but low for a ball. We're in the top of the third two outs. This is only the second time that Alcock has had a pitch from the stretch. Alcock took a little too much time. Looked like Arnold might be going. He was inching off a little bit at first base, getting, trying to get a little bit of a jump. They threatened to run before with Martinez, but it was a, a strikeout at the end of the inning. He was on his way, got a good jump. Pitches in for a strike to Burns. Down and in, nice job by Capola. He had a skip to his right, blocked that one from going by. It had a lot of bite to it down and in. The runner takes off, and they got him. Pacheco's going to tag him out. Chasing him back. He took off. Good throw by Cap Jared Coppola. Pacheco gets the put out. So they get the base hit. But Alcock only faces three in the inning. So a little different. He ended the first and second innings with back-to-back -back strikeouts. He started the third inning with back-to-back -back strikeouts. Gave up the hit, but it gets thrown out on the base pass. So Alcock has struck out six through three. And Samirius will look to get on the board and get him a little bit of a lead here. It'll be nine, one, and two for St. Mary's as we start the bottom of the third inning. This is, we're getting an a jump here on TV 15, and I always have to remember channel 36 if you have Verizon. I always say channel 15. But uh, we're starting yet another season. We'll have a couple of lacrosse games. But we'll have baseball and softball. And right into tournament time. So Aiden Lydon, he was another member of that Babe Ruth team that went to the Nationals. He pitched, I, I think he got the win that Babe Ruth got in the Nationals. Low for a ball. Chop foul. That went off his foot. You feel that one more today than you do most days because it's cold out there now. It really is cold. And this is typical New England. This is Tuesday. 
And the weatherman says on Thursday it's going to be 73. And it's about 42 today. So that's it's only a 30 degree difference. Good fastball for a strike. I do not envy the young men, and if there are any women over there at Manning Field with the track running around in their shorts. Hit on the ground right to the second baseman. Easy play for Gilbride over to Botnicki. One up, one down in the third. Top of the order, Colin Reddy. The center fielder would be the hitter. He led off the first inning with a base hit. And was the first of two to make it around the third base, but both times it was with two outs. And St. Mary's came up empty. Missing wide for a ball. When Missy had a good hockey season, got some big goals. Did a lot, killed penalties. On the power play. Got quite a few points for Mark Lee's hockey team. They almost made it to the Elite Eight. They had a play-in game that they lost. In for a strike. Low for a ball. The payoff pitch, way inside for ball four. Ready's on for the second time. Second walk given up by Colin Jana. Kyle Ouellette bounced out, shot the first. His one trip. He tried to bunt a couple of times to push Ready over. His ground ball to shot actually moved Ready over because it was just a little slow ground ball to shot. Shortstop only had one play to first base. The big play in that inning was the play by the shortstop Bravo who went way to his left and Picked off a base hit going to center field by Lee Pacheco and not only held Reddy at third, going from second to third, not able to score, but he threw Pacheco out at first and that helped Boston Prep and Colin Janney get out of the inning. Because the next hit, I got a fly ball to center field, which would have scored the run. But it was the third out. Hit right back to the mound. They're going to do it again. They throw it away. They had it picture perfect. They didn't have to go as quick. That was solidly hit by Ouellette. Looked like it was going to be another 1-6-3 double play. And the shortstop Bravo rushed it and threw it up and away. And they were lucky that Olet held up at first base. The ball hit beyond the dugout off the stands and bounced back in play. So Olet was stranded at first. So there's two outs with the runner at first. Pacheco had the hit taken away in the first inning. And RBI taken away as well. Hit back to the mound. Jana helping himself again. His third assist in three innings. So we played three here at Frazier Field in this Catholic Central League battle. Still nothing to choose between these two. St. Mary's nothing. Austin Prep nothing at the end of three. Bobby Alcock will start his fourth inning of work. He'll face two, three, and four. Peter Burns was the hitter up when they threw Dylan Arnold out trying to steal second base. 
to end the third inning. So he's back up, leading off the fourth. Runs up the bunt, takes the pitch for a strike. He was called out on strikes. Now there's a discussion between the two umpires. I think the only thing they could be talking about right there was, did he make contact? Because he ran up and might have been out of the batter's box. I think that was the question, although I don't know that for sure. I can't think of anything else with nobody on and nobody out why they would have a discussion now. Hit to left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. So Burns goes the other way. Slices it at the left field. And for the first time in the ball game, Austin Prep has the leadoff hitter on base. Logan Bravo, the shortstop. He made that big play in the first inning to Rob Pacheco over hit and an RBI. Otherwise, St. Mary's would be on top right now. It was in the middle of an 1-6-3 double play that helped in the second inning when St. Mary's had 2-1. Missing wide for a ball. He was called out on strikes his first trip. Good fastball for a strike. Alcock looks like he's almost in midseason form and they haven't been outside that much. Quick throw over to first. Burns gets back standing up. So Austin Prep now leads in the hit parade. They've got three, St. Mary's got two. Chop towards third base, that's gonna be trouble. They don't even bother throwing. It's another infield hit. Two of their four hits have been infield hits. So Austin Prep has a threat, first and second with nobody out. Just a little, I'm dating myself, Baltimore Chop. Already had no chance, just held on to it. Josh Botnicki grounded out, shot to first. Moretti expects a bunt at third base, squeezing in. Alcock steps off. Nick Lukakis was up in front of the bag. Now he backs behind the bag and behind the base runner with a left-handed hitter up. Now he squeezes in a little bit. The Austin Prep bench getting a little excited with their first rally. High for a ball. Didn't have much to cheer about in the, the first three. But they're alive in the dugout now. Uh, Derek Dana coming out. Now Clark stepping off a couple of times. Derek Dana comes out to talk to the troops. Little team in a huddle on the pitcher's mound. That's the only spot in the infield that's dirt. Infield, foul territory, all the way from behind third base, all the way around to behind first base, short right field. Everything is turf. And I gotta say, they did a tremendous job on this field. I was here uh, maybe a week, 10 days ago, and it was totally covered in snow. And on top of getting rid of the snow, 
they had a little residue that the geese left here that they had to get rid of besides. So it was a, it was a project and a half. And, and a tip of the hat to Fisher College because they played their games here. And their team c coaches, they came out and helped working on the field, getting it ready. Waves at the pitch for a strike. That might have been outside. Might have been on the corner. Swing and a miss again. That broke down and in. Nice stop by Coppola. So Alcock quickly gets ahead of Botnicki. He's the number four hitter in the lineup, so it didn't figure that they would have him bunt, the cleanup hitter. Wing and a miss. That's a big strikeout. Seventh strikeout for Alcock. Alex Martinez got a base hit. He got the infield hit, the chop of the third. As I mentioned, two of their four hits have been infield hits. High for a ball. So an opposite field hit by Burns, an infield hit by Bra Bravo. Strikeout follows. Two on, one out here in the fourth in the scoreless game. Good fastball for a strike. He gets about as far back in a batter's box as you can get. Curveball hung up inside. He picked it almost off his ear and lined it foul into that grassy knoll behind first base. And Alcock is ahead of Martinez. Waves at the pitch for strike three. Alcock's walking off. There's only two outs. Good fastball. He blew it right by him. John Gilbride, the second baseman. He struck out his first trip. Hit high in the air. Ready the center fielder coming on. Calls Pacheco off and makes the play right behind shortstop. So Alcock comes up big after the two hits, two strikeouts, a fly out. For the third straight inning, he strikes out two. For the fourth straight inning, he strikes out two. We are halfway through the ball game, or half through regulation, I should say, the way this one is going. So Austin Prep, that dugout got sky high with the first two hits, and they quieted down quickly on two strikeouts and a flyout. Eight strikeouts in four innings for Alcock, and we move into the bottom half of the fourth. It'll be four, five, and six, the middle of the order for the Spartans as they try to get on the board. Kind of a veteran team. We got Reddy, Pacheco, Mulready, 
Miklakakis, Bernardini, Cash, Alcock, Josh McTaylor, Lou Vidal is, is in the dugout. Those are part of a successful St. Mary's team last year. Coming off a successful winter season. We started the football season with, uh, it's never happened in the city of Lynn, the four high schools combined for 40 wins. Lynn Tech leading the way with 12 winning the MASCAC championship. That's never happened before. Lynn English boys team lost in the division final. They, they scored to take the lead. They lost in the closing seconds of the division final. Close enough to go to a Super Bowl. Matt Durgan, St. Mary's team, lost the team that's gone to the Super Bowl and won it three straight years. They were tied in the fourth quarter, lost it late in the, in the fourth period in the semifinals. Hit sharply on the ground. Bravo with another nice play. Throws them already out. Range to his left. Got it. Made a good, strong throw. Jared Coppola drew a walk his first time. We get into basketball. We had 11 teams. Eight basketball, three hockey. Eight of them made the tournament. St. Mary's boys one game away from going to the Garden and playing in the Eastern Mass Final. One game away from playing in their third straight state championship game. The rookie coaches, uh, Coach Anderson and Coach Grasser at English and Classical had good years. Coach Roberts, first year, nice curveball for the Lynn Jets. Had a great year considering when they had the first practice. They said, raise your hand if you'd like to be the goaltender. They didn't have a goaltender. And Mr. Gallant stepped in and did a tremendous job. So the seasons have gone good. We're hoping baseball and softball will be as good. Way up and in for a ball. That one didn't break very well. Second walk to Capola. Third walk in the game. Uh, Jenna, Jana. Anthony Nikolakakis got a base hit his first time up. Dumped it over the first baseman's head into right field. Throw over, diving back is Coppola. Hit foul to the backstop. Got his money's worth with that swing and just tipped it back. Another quick toss over, getting back is Coppola. We're in the bottom of the fourth, no score here. Down and away for a ball. Colin Jano on the mound has helped himself with three assists. One of them, a 1-6-3 double play. The other one should have been a 1-6-3 double play. The ball was thrown away at first base. Lined in the left center field. That's by everybody. That's going to go all the way back to the warning track. They were playing in close. They're going to wave the runner home, and he's going to score. 
They were playing shallow. And Nicola Congress burned them with a double. He's got good power. So the ice is finally broken here at Frazier Field in the bottom of the fourth. That walk cost Austin Prep is followed by the double. And Coppola wheeling and dealing, huffing and puffing around third scoring. Chop over the pitcher's head to second base. They'll throw Bernardini out. Nicola Kakos will move over to third. And yeah, Tommy Cash will be the hitter. So this, this is the third inning in four that St. Mary's had a runner at third with two outs. This time they at least have a runner in. Good pitch for a strike. No, I thought I was, I was just about to say up and away, and he right here come up with strike two. So Coppola worked hard to get that his second walk in two at bats, and then worked hard to hoof it all the way around from first to score on the double. Chase that pitch for strike three. That's the first strikeout for Jaina. But St. Mary's breaks the ice. The walk. And Nicola Conkers is second in, a big double. And St. Mary's is broken open. Scoreless game, it's now St. Mary's one. Austin Prep nothing at the end of four. Seven, eight, and nine for Austin Prep as we start the fifth inning. Good pitch for a strike. Bobby Alcock takes the mound for the first time with a lead. A skinny, but a one nothing lead. Waves at that pitch that was down and away. Swing and a miss. The beat goes on for Bobby Alcock. Jake Thane was called out on strikes as one trip. Down and away for a ball. High for a ball. Hit on the ground. Leiden. Nice play. That wasn't an easy hop. It kind of exploded as it got to him. But he stayed with it. That wasn't one of those Sunday hops. High for a ball. High and tight for a ball. Go, 
Missing inside for a ball. First walk given up by Alcock. Comes with two outs in the fifth. As the number nine hitter that he walked. And the leadoff hitter, Dylan Arnold. Bounce out. Pitcher, the first baseman pitcher covering. And last time up, he got a base hit. High for a ball. Way wide for a ball. And can you tell this is the first game of the season because I've been bouncing everybody around and now I have to say that it's Mulready the catcher and Capola is the, is the third baseman. I've got the batting order right. Missing for a ball. I just got him in the wrong place. Wrong position, I should say. In for a strike. Uh, with Arnold taken all the way. And that's ball four. So after two quick outs, back-to-back -back walks, and moved the tag run into scoring position. Peter Burns was called out on strikes. Last time up, he dropped one in front of the left fielder for a base hit. Derek Daner is coming out to talk to Bobby Alcock. He'll be warming up in the bullpen for St. Mary's. So two quick outs followed by two walks. And taking a loop too much time. Burns asked for time and got it from the umpire. Missing wide for a ball. Burns the number two hit a three, four, and five on deck. Dropping down and in for a ball. So all of a sudden, Bobby Arcock is Lost his groove a little bit. Good pitch on the corner for a strike.
Down and in for a ball. Payoff pitch coming up. And that's ball four. I'm surprised the runners weren't going. Three walks in a row. Have loaded the bases with two outs for Logan Bravo, who struck out and got a base hit. Made a couple of nice plays at Charleston. One that cost St. Mary's a run. Alcock opting to pitch from the stretch with the bases loaded and two outs. So a big part of the ball game for both teams. Curveball drops in for a strike. It looked good with the strikeout and the ground out starting the inning. Two outs, nobody on. But then all of a sudden, three straight walks. Hadn't walked a batter coming in. Hangs up and in for a ball. Down and away for a ball. Still nobody warming up for St. Mary's. Hit long and high and deep and foul. Almost in the direction of my car. So we have very important deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Three on in a one nothing game. Here in the top of the fifth. Bravo asked for time just as Alcock was getting ready to start. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Up and coming. Breaks down and away. Nice job by the catcher to go get it. So an even bigger pitch right here. Three and two. Two outs. The runners should be off and running. And they are. And it misses for ball four. They thought it was strike three. The catcher threw the ball back. They were leaving the field. Austin Prep almost stole a run. So a bizarre turn of events. Alcock was almost unhittable and came up big through the first four. Now Four straight walks. Swing and a miss by Botnicki, who's grounded out and struck out. So Austin Prep has tied it. St. Mary's very vicious, gracious host. Four consecutive walks. High for a ball. Botnicki come up and swung at the first pitch. You would have you would have thought after walking four in a row that the uh, the the old modus operandi would be to take a pitch. Down and in for a ball. Two and one. 
Still no warm-up action for St. Mary's. High for ball three. So if this isn't a strike, Austin Prep's going to get the lead without putting the ball in play. And that's ball four. And that brings Derek Daner out of the dugout. And all of a sudden, that one nothing lead is gone. Austin Prep, without putting the ball in play, is leading in the game 2-1. to one. Jared Capola will be the new pitcher. Al Clark moves over to third base. Alex Martinez singled and struck out. And now that Austin Prep bench has come alive again. Swing and a miss. They haven't put the ball in play and they've scored two runs and taken the lead. Five consecutive walks. In for a strike, quick 0-2. Martinez is the eighth hitter in the inning. The first two went out easily. A strike out and a ground out. Swing and a miss. Capola comes in and douses the fire. But the damage is done. Austin Prep takes the lead without a base hit. So our clock goes four and two thirds innings. Gave up four hits that were meaningless. Both runs are earned. He walked five in a row to bring in the two runs. He struck out nine. But he just lost it in the fifth inning. And wound up walking five in a row. So without putting the ball in play, Austin Prep wipes out the one nothing deficit and takes a 2-1 to -one lead going into the bottom of the fifth. It'll be 9-1-2 for St. Mary's. Yeah, a strange turn of events. Alcock was breezing. They couldn't really do anything against him. They had a hit with two out. With a, an out and he had back-to-back -back strikeouts. They got a two-out hit in the third, thrown out stealing. They had two hits in the fourth, leading off, got two strikeouts and a flyout to get out of it. So it looked like he was breezing. Bono will pinch hit for Aiden Leiden. Bono and then the top of the order, Colin Reddy, Kyle Lillette. <clears throat> so for the first time, Colin Jaden. Jaina will take the mound with a lead. In for a strike. Hit on the ground to second base. Kilbride makes the play over to Botnicki. 
One up, one down in the fifth. Carla Ray's been on base twice. She got a base hit, and he drew a walk. His walk was wiped out on a 1-6-3 double play. He made around the third on the base hit, but with two outs, and one of those outs was a great play by Bravo. The shortstop taking a hit away from Pacheco that would have knocked in a run. Chop foul down the first baseline. Down and away for a ball. Strike three called. Second strikeout for Jada. Colette is grounded a shot and Hit into that 1-6-3 double play. Uh, reached, excuse me. The ball was thrown away at first base. He reached first on the throwing error. Hit up the middle. And they throw it away again. This time it gets away. He'll chase it down. So Roulette reaches on the arrow. Second arrow. In the ball game, both times, Olette reached first. Lee Pacheco, nice stop by the catcher Burns on a pitch down and away. Pacheco had a base hit and RBI taken away on the play by the shortstop Bravo in the first inning. And then he bounced to the pitcher his last time up. Missing for ball two. I was wondering if Derek Dana might try to get Olette to second base. The worst can happen is if he's thrown out, you'll have three, four, and five coming up in the sixth inning. In for a strike. Pacheco taking all the way. It's two and one. Nice stop again by Burns, the catcher. Keeps the runner at first. And it's three and one. So it took me almost five innings. I finally got the position straightened out. Diving back, Olette at first base. On a quick toss over by Jaina. Chop to third. Long throw across the diamond. They get Pacheco, so the error doesn't hurt. St. Mary's is down in the fifth. We've completed five in this Catholic Central League battle. And it's a walk in the park for Austin Prep. Five walks, giving them two runs. They lead it two to one over St. Mary's at the end of five. John Gilbride, the second baseman. 
will lead off the sixth inning. He has struck out and fly to center field. Swing and a miss. Waves at it again for strike two. Didn't miss by much. That's a tough pitch to take with two strikes. You take that pitch, you hold your breath and hope the umpire doesn't say strike three. Breaks down away for a ball. So Aiden Leiden is back at second base. And Jared Coppola was starting his first full inning of work. He came in and got the one hitter he faced with a strikeout. Hit foul back and out of play. Strike three call. He looked at that pitch. Cal Barry has struck out twice, once called, once swinging. This is his first trip facing Coppola. High for a ball. Fishing for ball two. Missing for ball three. Taking all the way as you would expect, it's in for a strike. And that misses for ball four. Jake Zane, the right fielder, called out on strikes, grounded out second and first. Again, both against. Alcock. Tries the button, misses it. And the third base coach wants to talk to him. I don't know if he missed the sign. Gonna sound like he thought he was supposed to bunt. Maybe he wasn't supposed to bunt. They quickly want to get, make sure they're on the same page. Good pitch right down the middle for a strike. This is low for a ball. Wow. 
Missed again. Not by much, but enough. Back-to-back -back walks after a strikeout. So here we go again. Uh, Andy Croto, uh, the left fielder, is the hitter. He was the instigator. After two quick outs in the fifth, he drew the first of five consecutive walks. He came in and scored the run that tied the game. And he started that parade. And now he's up after a strikeout and two consecutive walks. So seven walks in an inning and a third. And St. Mary's is on their heels again with two on and one out. In for a strike. Squeezing in at first, laying back a little bit at third. Nice stop by Mulready. <laughs> On the corner, first strike. Down to pull the trigger. Held up, and it broke on the outside corner for strike three. So a strikeout, back to back walks, and a strikeout. He thought that was going to break a little further than it did, stayed on the outside corner. Dylan Arnold, the center fielder, grounded out. First baseman pitcher covering, got an infield hit, and drew the second of the five consecutive walks and scored the second run. His run is the difference in the game right now in the top of the sixth. Hit to third. Nice job by Alcock. Caught it just about chest high. And he beat the runner to the bag. So Shamiri escapes. The two walks don't hurt. But they still need a run. Capola picked up his second and third strikeouts. So if they're going to do it, this is the inning. Three, four, and five. Or four, five, and six for St. Mary's. John Mulready, Jared Capola, Anthony Nicolakakis. And St. Mary's will try to get back in it. We're going to get some warm-up action down the bullpen. Mulready has flied the center and grounded a short. And Colin Jane is starting his sixth inning of work. He's pitched well. He's given up the one run. He's only given up three base hits. He walked two. One of the walks hurt because it came around the score on Nikola Kakas's double. He's only struck out two.
in for a strike. Already looking to get it started, trying to get on base. Get the tying run on. Pops that one up. Foul up in the seats. Jammed him, he got inside on the hands and he pops it up to left field. Got under it. Good pitch by Gina. One up, one down in the sixth. Jared Capola has walked twice. The second time he worked hard to get the walk and then came all the way around to score on Nick Lakakis' double. Up and away for a ball. See, Mavis has three hits, three hits, and Nick Lakakis has two of them. Chop to third base. They're going to have to hurry. Nice play by the third baseman. Alex Martinez, no wasted effort, came in, fielded it, and on the move, throws Capola out. That's a very nice defensive play. Two up, two down in the sixth. Nicola Conk, as I mentioned, got a base hit and got wiped out on a 1-6-3 double play and then doubled to left center field for a second hit, knocking in the run. He's got the one RBI for the one St. Mary's run. And they're getting late. Foul tip off the catcher's glove towards the backstop. Good fastball for a strike. Dana was on his way to the dugout. He threw it right where Burns put the target, but Burns put the target outside. And Nickel Congress didn't chase it. Solidly hit. Nice play by the second baseman. Hit right on the nose. And the second baseman, Gilbride, took a step to his right, speared it, and he throws Nickel Congress out. That's the first one, two, three inning for Colin Jainer and Austin Prep. It comes in the bottom of the sixth. We're through six here at Fraser Field. That one tough inning by St. Mary's is the difference. Austin Prep leads it two to one at the end of six. Two, three, four for Austin Prep. Capola starting his second inning of work. Got a little bit of trouble in the six after a strike on he walked two, but then going to strike out. And a nice play at third by Bobby Alcock for the force at third to get out of the inning. He's got three strikeouts in his inning and a third of work. He came on relief for Bobby Alcock. Down and away for a ball. Hi, for a ball. I'm going to get somebody loosening up in the Austin Prep bullpen. A 
Line foul. He got all of that one and pulled it just foul past first base. Line shot. Missed by a couple of feet. Out in front, just far enough to pull it foul. Missing down the way for a ball. Burns has struck out, singled, and walked. He was one of the five walks in that fifth inning when, with two outs, they got five walks and scored two runs. On the ground to second base. Leiden over to Nicolakakis. One out in the seventh. Logan Bravo, the shortstop, has struck out, singled, and he drew a walk for the RBI. Knocking in the first run. He got the fourth of the five straight walks. In for a strike. Facing Capola for the first time. Jammed him, and he got all of it and hit it well, but hit it well foul. Got way out in front of it. Pulled it way foul past third base. Missing low for a ball. Mulready's done a nice job behind the plate. The one player that tried to steal, he threw him out. Made some nice stops. Didn't miss by much. Almost a perfect pitch. Just missed the outside corner. The 2-2 pitch. Waves at it for strike three. In for a strike. Josh Botnicki grounded a short, struck out swinging, and he picked up the fifth consecutive walk, and his walk is the difference in the game. It forced in the run to make it two to one. And that's where we are in the top of the seventh. Two to one, Austin Prep. If St. Mary's doesn't come up with something in the bottom of the seventh, this is going to be a very bitter pill to swallow. A very early loss, but a loss to a in the Catholic Central League. Swing and a miss. Capone has been almost perfect. He had back to back walks in the sixth. The only two base runs he's given up, he got out of the inning. This is low for a ball. And that's ball four. So the two out walk extends the inning. For Alex Martinez, who has singled, struck out twice. 
his second strikeout came against Capola, who came in relief of Alcock and struck Martinez out with the bases loaded. But most of the damage was done, or the damage was done by that time, giving Austin Prep the two to one lead. Swing and a miss. Curve ball drops down and in. In for a strike. Good pitch. Wing and a miss. But Coppola comes on and gets the job done. Now the offense has to try and get something done. Coppola goes two and a third innings. No hits. He did walk three. Struck out five. Fourteen of the 21 outs are strikeouts for St. Mary's. But now, they're, and they're sitting on the tail end of a two to one score with three outs left in the ball game. And they're gonna have seven, eight, and nine. To face Colin Janey who's looking for a complete game. So Alcock went four and two thirds, gave up four hits, struck out nine, but had those five consecutive walks that forced in the two runs. Capola comes in, gets a strike out the guy of the inning. He goes two and a third, doesn't give up a hit. He did walk three, but it didn't hurt. He struck out five, helping himself. So 14 of the 21 out strikeouts. In for a strike. Cal Bernardini is bounced in a 1-6-3 double play and grounded out second and first. Looking to become a base runner. Chop to shot. Big hop. And they throw it away again. It goes in the stands. That's going to put the tying run at second base. He did it again. He had a big hop. And he overshot the runway. He fired that way over everybody into the stands. Connor Donnie, who was going to run. at second. So St. Mary's has the tying run at second base, even the bottom of the seventh with nobody out. Tommy Cash, the hitter. Now to St. Mary's, do they try to bunt them over to third or they take, or they take three shots to get a hit and bring them in? Cash has popped a shot, struck out swinging. And the confab, the meeting at the mound for Austin Prep is complete. Cash will step in the batter's box. And St. Mary's has a life here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Tying run at second with nobody out. First baseman Botnicki is almost shaking hands with Tommy Cash. Didn't look like he was going to butt. The 
Lines it foul, one on one. Well, it doesn't make a difference to Colin Jane. He's been pitching from the stretch the entire game. Nice stop. That's a nice job by Peter Burns. He's made a few of those. That keeps the runner at second base. That's a big time play in the seventh inning in a one run game. Hit in a right field from a hit. They hold the runner at third. And he took a very wide turn. And he's out at third base. I don't believe it. Tommy Donahue held him at third. He went all the way, way down the line. And they throw him out at third base. St. Mary's had first and third, the tying run at third, the winning run at first. This is going to be Lou Vidal hitting for Leiden. What a shame. Hit to first base. They have to go to first with it. Pitcher hustling over, a good thing he got there. They wouldn't have got made the play. That would have scored the tying run. So I said this would be a bitter pill. There's going to be even more of a bitter pill if this runner a second doesn't score. Colin Reddy has a base hit, a walk. Last time up, he was called out on strikes. So they're down to their last out. Hit right back to the mound. Jana gets his fourth assist. And St. Mary's is going to feel this one for a while. Austin Prep scored two without putting the ball in play. St. Mary's has a runner thrown out at third base. Would have been a tying run. And the hit to first base would have tied the game up, would be going into extra innings. Instead, it's a very bitter loss for St. Mary's. They got the lead in the fourth, a one-out walk to Capola. He came around to score on Nick Lakakis's double. They were leading one to nothing. Bobby Alcock was breezing into the fifth inning. He got a strikeout and a ground out to start the fifth inning. And then he just kind of lost it and walked five in a row. The fourth one to Bravo, the fifth one to Botnicki, forced in the two runs. Those were the two runs for Austin Prep that they got. And then St. Mary's looked like they were getting back in it. Bernardini's ground ball was thrown away at first base. A runner at second with nobody out. A base hit to right field. It's going to be first and third with nobody out. The winning run at first base. The runner went around third. Tommy Donahue had his hands up, hold up, stop at third. The runner kept on going, took a real wide turn at third base. And the first baseman, by Nicky, threw a rifle shot over to Martinez at third. They tagged him out, and that kind of squashed it. They got another base runner to second base on that little pop force at first base. But then the ground ball back to the mound ends the game. And St. Mary's is going to go to one and one. They scored 17 in their first game. They get one in this one, but it's going to be a bit of pill. Five consecutive walks scores the run, scores two runs, and that's the difference in the game. For St. Mary's, Reddy had a hit and a walk. Mulready did a very nice job behind home plate. Coppola had two walks and scored a run. Nicola Kakis had two base hits. Knocked in a run. St. Mary's only had three base hits. Nick Lakakis had two of them. And Austin Prep 
made three errors in the ball game. The error in the seventh inning looked huge. Looked like it was going to be a big break for St. Mary's, getting him back and maybe even winning the game in the bottom of the seventh. Instead, the base running error cost him, and he wound up on the short end. St. Mary's loses it by a score of 2-1, to one, giving up five consecutive walks, getting the two runs for Austin Prep. So Austin Prep sneaks out of here with a 2-1 to one win. They didn't put the ball in play, but they scored two runs, and then they survived the seventh inning with an error and a base hit, but base running cost St. Mary's a possible tie or a win, and St. Mary's will drop to 1-1. One and one. Austin Prep will go to 1-0. and oh. The final score, Austin Prep 2. St. Mary's won. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm John Hoffman saying we'll see you next time.